We are now entering hour three of the 24 hour uh, best show. Best Show 24, hashtag Best Show 24. And it's because we have a paperback book out. Uh, my book, It Never Ends, is in paperback now. And you can get it in stores. We're also going to give copies of the book away to people who are on the Twitch. We'll start, we'll figure that out. Um, let's go to the phones, hot phones. I'm being told, I'm being told on the phones now that we have another guest. Uh, and this is, uh, I guess I have to hit this button. Famous person on the line. Famous person on the line. Here we go. Here we go. I'm being told we have a famous person on the line right now. And this is an exciting one. And this is something that, uh, nobody will believe happened. It'll be kind of like the way when Mr. Ed would say he was just talking. I swear you should have heard it a second. He was just saying things. Well, Mr. Ed didn't say that other Look, we have Conan O'Brien on the line. How are you? Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for for you doing. You know, it this. wasn't Mr. Red. That really bothered me. Uh, of course, it was uh, Mr. Wilbur. Red was the horse. Wilbur. So why would he? Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I'm confused. I haven't seen that show in 75 years, so I apologize. Yeah, you can't. You can't. Like, who's actually watching Mr. Ed at this point in? time where they're just like uh, uh, i tell you exactly who's watching it my brother neil my huh? brother neil only watches television from 1959 to 1969 and won't watch anything else mm -hmm. i guess that uh, does he not know about this uh golden age of television boy he wait wait, wait till he sees alice <laughs> <laughs> yeah kiss my grits he <laughs> saw seconds he saw a few moments of alice but i swear to god i haven't uh my oldest brother We'll only watch black and white television that goes from the late fifties to the late sixties, and that's it. And is shockingly ignorant of all of the amazing stuff like Breaking Bad mm -hmm. and Severance and all the you know. Won't watch a second of those because they're not in black and white, mm -hmm. and uh, they don't star obscure people. Yeah, well, uh, I guess I guess Pluto TV was made for him then. Yes. He's all over that. He also is the last person I know who buys uh, massive amounts of VHS tapes uh, <laughs> online okay. and watches them in a crappy old VHS player. It's, last guy. It, it's a, and it's a buyer's market. He's got a clear path on that. Yes, he really does. He is. And when the whole economy collapses and people are using VHS cassettes, of have gun will travel as currency, <laughs> my <laughs> brother Neil will rule mm -hmm. over all of us. So yeah, uh, my hat's off to him. He's making the right call. No, he he really. I think he's figured it out. And uh, no offense to you, Conan. I think Neil might be my favorite member of your family now. <laughs> well, that would line up with what many many people who know all of my six siblings uh, mm -hmm. would agree that uh, I'm sort of towards the bottom. Tom, how can I help you? Because you're you're doing this for 24 hours straight. You're the Lindbergh baby. Of, I'm of the Lindbergh radio baby. Of and audio. Yeah. This, is, this is incredible. You've got a, what are you doing? What are you eating? What are you drinking to keep yourself going? Well, as I told uh, Joe Firestone uh, earlier, I started off. Name uh, dropper. Yeah, I know. Look out. Get your own, open your umbrellas, everybody. Falling names. Um, <laughs> I, I entered a hot dog bun eating contest earlier today, which turned out to be a little bit of a uh, uh, miscalculation. Yes. That I. Uh, yes, that's made... a lot of bread. Yeah. Um, and no protein if you're just eating the bun. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have. So that was a mistake. Would that be considered carbo loading? That's like a phrase I hear, like for like people who like run marathons or I was like, Oh, I had to carbo load before the thing. And like, I love that two complete non-athletes are now <laughs> discussing the merits of carbo loading. Yeah. Uh, I carbo load before I tell an anecdote, but <laughs> cause yeah, not, not for, not for any other reason. I've, I don't, I try not to move my legs if possible, but I'm just curious how you're pulling this off. This is impressive. Well, uh, I, I, I'm starting off. I, I, I took a, I slept, uh, pretty well last night and I, uh, 
I'm trying to go easy on the caffeine so that that way I don't kind of cap out. Look, I don't know what this is going to be like, and I don't know where this is going to end up. It's really. You're already. And can I just be honest as a friend? Sure. You're not making sense. You're babbling already. I I mean, you're you're not that far into this thing. And um, I was listening before I even came on and very little of what you said made any sense. It's a lot of consonants. Yeah. uh, No vowels that I could hear. No, and I, I'm worried. We're all worried about you. Thank you know, you. this could go very badly. It, it already is. I feel like Hal, uh, when they unplugged him in 2001, I'm starting to talk a little slower and sing old public domain songs the way Hal did uh, Daisy when he was singing that on the, <laughs> the ship. I love that Hal had the sense to to sing a public domain song because he didn't want to <laughs> have to deal. Yeah. With a union, well, uh, even in deep, deep space, when uh, he's trying to destroy humanity, he didn't want to deal with a union. Look, Kona, you're one of the smartest people who's ever walked the earth. Maybe you can answer this. I, When you watch these shows that take place in the future, but were filmed decades ago, like, for example, Star Trek The Next Generation, for some reason, this is taking place in the 24th century or whatever, but yep. these yep. weirdos on this ship seems to, seem to have... A, a, a pretty strong affinity for Gilbert and Sullivan and all of these things that are like wait, no Beatles enter the picture here and all you guys. I know exactly. Well, that's because I mean, we both know they couldn't clear the Beatles. They couldn't get the rights to a Beatles song. So no one can be a fan, whatever Jacques Picard can accomplish. And I'm sure mm-hmm. he's a very cool guy. Even he, with all of their technology can't get past the, the publishing of the Beatles. Yeah. And so um, I learned a long time ago on my late night show that you can mess around with a lot of things. You can, you're constantly trying to bend the rules and break through and try weird stuff. And then uh, we would come up against, yeah. And then a Led Zeppelin song played Mm -hmm. and a giant anvil would fall on top of us. So (laughs) Uh no. Um, Yes. In the future, even the most advanced civilization, Mm -hmm will only admire music that they can clear legally. <laughs> yeah, they can clear. Their legal department. Yeah, it's like that or even like, um, yeah, like they just, there was one other thing where they just, they're caught, they're so, like, uh, what, why wouldn't the Beatles at least maybe make a few of like the terrible songs cheaper? Like Octopus's <laughs> Garden. Like, why wouldn't they okay, like what are like, the what are the terrible songs? Like Octopus's Garden. Um, oh, come on. That's that's Ringo's grand opus. <laughs> yeah, that's Maxwell's Silver Hammer. What are you talking Hammer. about? That's not terrible. Maxwell's Silver Hammer is terrible, though. You can admit that, Conan. I, you know, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say I rate them by difficulty of the dive. Okay. It's a song that features a big anvil, which I just <laughs> sure. know, magically mentioned yeah. seconds ago. Mm-hmm. Banging a, a hammer against, for Anvil songs, I think it's towards the top. What do you think of that? As far as Anvil songs, I, I can't argue with you. Exactly. It, now, So uh, I question your whole right to, to exist. Well, like, maybe I don't exist. Maybe this is all a glitch in the Matrix. I always love that mind. when people are like. I took a bunch of pills about an hour ago. <laughs> that's, so that, that's possible. That's, um, yeah. I like to take the pills first and then be like, then try to guess based on what's happening to my body, which pills they were. Yes. That's a fun game. Um, I, I, and the caveat, of course, uh, we're not recommending this to other people. You and I Mm -hmm. um, are experienced. We know what we're doing, but you take the pills and then you sit around and you try and guess, and then you find out, Oh, right. That's a nerve blocker. (laughs) That's a horse yes, tranquilizer. Exactly, yeah. That's an antipsychotic. Yeah. Uh, that pretty much shuts down the pancreas. Um, yeah. When you that's feel a drug when, that's, when you feel the system starting to starting to just kind of shut down the basics the the yes. bre- the breathing the blood yes. flow. Yes. When I know that my uh, my lungs are being suppressed my ability to take in oxygen is diminishing rapidly and that my whole colon has turned off. (laughs) I start to, I can narrow it down. I know, I know there's like nine pills that could be, and that's a fun game. It, yeah, I look, I think that 
could be a TV show. I think it is a TV show. <laughs> that, it's in development. That at would Fox. That fo- it's just a yeah. Is, is it a half yeah. hour? No, it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be a game show, okay. and contestants are going to take the pills and then guess what it is they took. And then um, there's a team backstage that resuscitates them. And uh, so it's still fairly safe, yeah. I guess. I love and, it. And uh, is... yeah, Meredith Vieira is going to host it. It's a big <laughs> deal. It's going to be coming soon. Meredith. Um, well, Conan, I want to first of all say, I know you just have this fancy schmancy podcast deal now, but I know how contracts work also. First of all, congratulations on that. Everybody loves oh, your podcast. You. But that's, I know how contracts work. I know these things get like the terms get agreed to, but the ink you p- didn't get actually signed yet. So I would like to make an 11th hour push to see if you would join the best show network. Just make it a lot. I'm throwing it at This is what we can guarantee you. What on the McDonald's menu do you like? Um, well, I love an egg McMuffin. Oh, there you go. Okay. Six egg I McMuffins love a, quarter a pound, I love a quarter pounder with cheese. I love McNuggets with a sweet and sour sauce. Sure. I love an extra large fries. Well, extra large is um, pushing it a little bit on the fries. Uh, you can't make do right, with the medium. Why don't we say this? How about two orders of the small fries? Well, that's how you do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. A listener once told me, he was like, hey, Tom, you know, you, you love, because I love the filet of fish is my weakness. Um so he said, hey, you know, if you scrape the tartar sauce off that thing and then you put this new sauce on it, it's kind of like a spice. And I was just like, part of me was just like, A, I was like, this is insane what you're saying. But then the other part of me was just like, how fast can I get to a McDonald's drive through to test this out? And, and did I, you test it out? I did. It was amazing. It's you can I guess they call that uh, when you you, you kind of like uh, you. You you jack the menu or whatever they do, and they you do. It's your, called a hack. It's hack. a life hack. It's a life hack. So yeah, yeah. Listen to me. I'm even though you're younger than me, I'm now becoming. I'm now the teenager saying to you, "Hey, dude, it's called the life hack." Yes, but that's what happens. Well, hold is, on. Wait, wait. Now, what was the special sauce you put on instead of their tartar sauce? They had some special thing that was for the McNuggets, but he was saying, "Ask for one of those, and we'll give it to." You. And they did. And it was pretty good. I can't remember what it was, but I enjoyed it. And uh, but you did sound so much like a teenager when you just said, "Hey, dude, it's called life hack." Oh, oh yeah, no. Trust me, when I say "Hey, dude," many people for a moment mm-hmm. um, think that I'm uh, fifteen, sixteen years old. I've been mistaken for Timothy Chalamet when I say "Hey, dude." And yeah, people are blown away. Well, somebody's um, coming, Conan. I'm so sorry. Somebody's coming in the studio now. Hello? Yeah, who are you? Wait, I know who you are. It's the Gorch. That's right! Oh my god, I love the Gorch. Wait, who's this? It's Conan O'Brien. Liz Lemon's (laughs) ex-boyfriend? Gorch. You're you're one of my favorites of all time. I really do. I idolize you, Gorch. Uh... I love your tales of what it was like in the 50s for real, not the fake TV version. That was the real um, stuff. Swing it. Now for, yeah, swinging that chain around, getting into fights. Now, for people who don't know, the Gorch, his name's Roland Gorchnik. He claims that the character of Fonzie was based on him back in the 50s. Like you actually yeah. were. Yeah, no claim. It's true. He was, uh, Gary Marshall was coming around York, PA, where I, uh, I grew up and where my clubhouse was, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, he, he, he based Fonzie on me and, uh, hey, Conan, um, refresh my memory. Did I just beat up you or did I beat up your whole show once? No, you beat up. I, I remember this very clearly. You and I got, had a beef right. and you came at me with a chain and I said, let's do this. But I was backed up by my entire staff. I mean, literally, it was me plus about 110 people. And you took out this chain and started whipping it around. And 
God bless you. You you whipped all of us. I did. You just cleaned the floor with us. I remember taking a chunk out of Sweeney's cheek. <laughs> <laughs> and then you took off. You took off Andy Richter's knee, like below the knee. Andy Richter now has prosthetics because you whipped that chain. I was skeptical that you could take on that many people with a chain. And I was blown away. You did it. You was, were amazing. I was pretty good. And then, if you recall, I made Jeff Ross suck my pipe. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, look, I don't like being beaten savagely with a chain right. by a, a almost 90-year-old man. But I have to give it to you. It was an honor to be beaten by you. Well, you were just, uh, you, you're the best. Thank I mean, you. God bless you. Thank it was you. just you're a legend, so to be beaten savagely with a chain by you, even though it caused me lots of problems, set me back in my health quite a ways, was a joy and a true, true milestone in my career, and I thank you for that. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, do you still play the guitar? I mess around a little bit on guitar. I wouldn't say I'm great. I'm going to say as comedians go, I'm probably okay. Okay. Do you know anything by the moon glows? Oh, of course. Who doesn't know the moon glows? How about the Orioles? I love the Orioles. The Olympics? I know all their songs. I know the whole catalog. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, I am in the Guinness Book of World Records now for uh, beating up 42 jukeboxes with my chain. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't get now, that 43rd. Why, why did you beat up the jukeboxes? Were you dissatisfied with the set list of the jukebox was it the what's it the aesthetics of the jukebox or is it just to do it it was just to do it you know and when you're 83 years old 83 years cool you're gonna do the same thing you're gonna have this this weird compulsion to go and break into an a a, uh, a, a warehouse that's that stores amusement stuff and just go hog wild with your chain and smash it just all go up. hog wild on it huh absolutely Hey, I have a question. Did you ever get any kind of settlement with Happy Days? I mean, that's a great they question. They took your story. I think right. Gary Marshall ripped you off. Yeah. Did you ever get any kind of settlement? No, but Anson Williams did let me live in his basement for four months. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was also told that Ralph Mouth gave you plasma. Is that true? He, yes, but he, he insisted that I call him Donald Most. And not Don. <laughs> well, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm the happiest I've ever been, and I have children. I, I mean, my children were born, and I looked at the, their faces, and I felt a degree of happiness that I thought was pretty high. This is double that, at least, well, because this is a huge, huge treat for me. I, and, I appreciate that. And, um, I want, yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I hope you take that to heart, that... Speaking to you for moments over a phone means so much more than the birth of my two children. And um, that is no exaggeration. That makes uh, me feel good. At all. That makes they're me... not, you know, I, I don't feel much for them now. No. We've grown distant. Um, well, once, all about money. Yeah, once they, once they reach six, it's like, what's there left to do? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Absolutely. You got it. Yes. You, yeah. you got it. Hey. You know, and uh, I just, um, uh, this is a big deal for me. Well, I get to talk to you and tell you what you've meant to me. And um, and thank you for not, for beating me with a chain, not just me, but a very large staff of cameramen, uh, audio technicians, um, animators, uh, you know, comedy writers, uh, various segment producers. I mean, and... It was unbelievable. It was like that scene in Kill Bill in the in the restaurant. I, I just kept bringing in new people. Mm -hmm. People came from other shows. The Ellen staff came running over on Warner Brothers. <laughs> right, right. I had people from Young Sheldon come over, mm -hmm. and you just kept whipping that chain. And it's and I think when you were done, you had beat up and maimed about seven hundred people. I did, but I'll tell you. You know who got a chunk out of my calf? Who? Stack. You're kidding. No. Really? Yeah, he's wow. pretty good with a chain. Pretty good. 
<laughs> He's pretty good. I didn't, I didn't see that coming. No, That's incredible. No, no. You're amazing, and you just, I mean, you don't seem to age. You just keep going. You are, you're a relic from the early 1950s. Here we are in 2022, and you're still whipping that chain, and you're still, you know, smacking up jukeboxes and, uh, and telling it like it is. I'm doing it. Hey, I have one final question for you. Yeah. Can you fix a rascal? You mean like the, the senior scooter? Yes, yeah. I, I know someone. I can't myself fix it, but I know a rascal guy. Okay. Because um, I, yeah, so I can I can get your rascal fixed it, if that's an issue. I'm not even saying it's your rascal. I don't want to embarrass you. I stole it. But, um, I, <laughs> so, I will, so you I stole will the rascal. rascal. I stole it, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, then, oh, you stole it. I yeah. You stole it and you want to fence it. I, I get did, it. Yeah, yeah. Silly me thinking... An 88-year-old man would need a rascal um, yeah. who clearly hasn't uh, taken care of his body <laughs> since <laughs> the Korean <laughs> War. But um, that's on me. It that's is. on me. But yeah. I will, I'll fix that rascal for you. No problem. Speaking of my body, could someone carry me to the bathroom? Tom. We'll work on it. I've got, there's some people around here who okay. can help you with that. Can you just get him, get him one of those. I've seen it. They have winches. They have winches that go over the toilet. Um, I'll set this up guys. uh, What I'd like to do if it's okay Mm -hmm. is I'd like to buy that for you guys. If it's possible and install it in the studio, it's a winch that will carry you to the toilet and deposit you over the bowl and suspend you if you will. And it's all remote controlled and it's something I would like to do. I would like to pay for it and have it installed. That is the most beautiful gesture imaginable. And Conan, we appreciate it. And, um, we appreciate you calling into this 24 hour, whatever it is. Help. Well, me. listen, Help I'm, me. I'm, I, 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 you know, take a moment of sincerity. I'm a massive fan and, um, just, uh, in awe of your work and delighted to be invited to call in. So thank you. Thank well, you guys. Good luck with the, uh, 24 hour thing. Thank you. Uh, I think it's already, to be honest, and I'm saying this as a friend. It's already going very badly. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, well, thank you. It's sometimes yeah, you need I mean, fresh I can eyes. Tell. Fresh eyes. Fresh eyes. Your, yeah, your glucose levels are in the toilet, yeah. uh, and you are fading fast. <laughs> oh, it's, but it's the effort I admire. In an era where no one tries anymore, this mm-hmm. is so foolish. Yeah, this is to be admired. In an era where talented people don't try. Once in a while, you got to give a shot to a talentless person who'll give it their all. I'm like Rudy from the movie yes. Rudy. He sucked at you football. <laughs> he straight up sucked at football. He browbeat. You hit it on the nail on the head. Yeah. You were the, you know, I, and this is funny. I'm looking up on Wikipedia right now, and it says long referred to as the audio Rudy. <laughs> audio Rudy. Incredible. Well, that, I am the audio. That's the nicest thing anybody ever said from your lips to God's ears. <laughs> Audio Rudy <laughs> shall be what I am known as going forward. Um, <laughs> seriously, Conan, yeah. this has been a total treat. Thank you so much for taking the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, and for and for me as well. And have fun and have me back on sometime, anytime. Of course, so it would be our pleasure. I'll talk to you soon. All right, take care. Thank have you a good so night. much. Bye. Okay, bye. Well, that's a that's a treat, huh? What about that Gorch? Oh, he's asleep. Oh no. We got to get him out. Can somebody get him out of here, please? Somebody please help get the gorge out of here. Thank you. Thank you for carrying him out. I appreciate it.